Thank you for joining this talk. Uh, my name is Varun Gupta. I'm a faculty at the University of Chicago. And in this talk, I'll give you a brief snippet of our results on learning and control of non-stationary linear dynamical system, in particular, a very special linear dynamical system, which is the linear quadratic regulator. This is joint work with Yuve Luo, who's a graduate student at Stanford Graduate School of Business, and my colleague, Navin Kola, who's a faculty at the University of Chicago. So I'll begin by uh, covering briefly what the NPR problem is and uh, a classical result from the theory of control of linear dynamical systems. So it's a, a simplest example of continuous space discrete time MDPs. So XT denotes the state at time t, which lives in R to the N. Our controls uh, are denoted by UT and they live in uh, R to the T. And the MDP itself is parameterized by two matrices, A and B. A is called the dynamics matrix and B is called the input matrix. And the way A and B enter the picture uh, are through the dynamics. So if uh, my current state at time t is XT and the action that I take at time t is UT, then the the state at time t plus one is given by a linear function of the current state and the action uh, plus some noise wb so that's why it's called uh, linear dynamics the assumption that we'll make in this uh, paper is that the noise wt is gaussian uh, so it's normal with some known covariance matrix w whose eigenvalues are uh, lower and upper bounded by uh, constants okay so that's the linear part of the nqr uh, the cost at time t given the current state xt and the action ut are given by a quadratic function of the state uh, and the action, and that's the quadratic part of NQR. Okay. Our goal will be to minimize the infinite size and average cost. So uh, the sum of the cost over uh, t times steps averaged by t and limit as t goes to infinity. And the classical result in the theory of NQR says that uh, the optimal controls have fairly nice structure. In particular, uh, there is some matrix k star so that the uh, optimal con control or action at time t is given by this matrix k star times the current state xt. So that's just a brief overview of uh, what an LQR problem is and what's known for controlling an LQR problem with known dynamics and cost. The problem that we look at in this paper is the learning and control of a non-stationary LQR problem. So now we look at a finite horizon MDP and we'll assume that the, the dynamic matrices A and B are now non-stationary and unknown to the algorithm which is trying to control this LQR system. However, we'll assume that the non-stationality is not extremely severe. So in particular, if we look at the sum of the Frobenius norm of the changes of these input uh, matrices, this, this total variation of the input is sublinear NP. So for example, like T to the alpha for some alpha between zero and one. And we'll assume that this variation uh, is unknown to the algorithm which is trying to control this non-stationary system. The dynamics are similar to the stationary uh, version, except that the matrix a, matrices A and B are replaced by their non-stationary versions. And the cost as well uh, is the same as the stationary case. Uh, we'll assume that the matrices Q and R, which parameterize the cost, uh, are fixed throughout the horizon and also known to the algorithm. So the only unknowns are the dynamics A and B. The goal this time would be to minimize the regret for our control policy. And by that, I mean the expected cost we incur uh, while controlling this non stationary system minus the cost of the optimal non anticipated policy phi. So by an optimal non-anticipated policy, I mean a policy which knows the entire sequence of uh, matrices A and B, A, T, and B, T, but does not know the disturbances W. Okay. And it's sort of fairly easy to uh, observe that the policy pi, uh, the optimal non-anticipated policy pi, also has a linear feedback control structures, uh, except that the matrix K is not stationary, but it depends on the on time T. So there's an easy dynamic programming recursion that we can write to find the optimal system. So on this slide, let me give you a brief review of uh, the main results of our pa paper, somewhat informally stated. So the first theorem that we proved in our paper is a lower bound on the regret. So we proved that uh, for time horizon large enough and for variation in the input parameters, which is sublinear NP, there is no online algorithm which guarantees a regret which is smaller than variation to the two-fifth and uh, time horizon to the three-fifth. Or in other words, for any online algorithm for learning and controlling uh, a non-stationary LQR system, there is some distribution over the instances so that the expected regret of this uh, online algorithm will be at least variation with the two fifth three to the three fifth. Our main contribution is a matching rubber bound. So we exhibit uh, an algorithm dynamic LQR, uh, which matches the, uh, the lower bound of So it's minimax optimal. And then finally, we also prove a lower bound on a very popular class of algorithms for control of non-stationary uh, uh, MDPs as well as for non stationary funded. So, one popular class of heuristics is what are called uh, static window based restarting algorithms. So, we pick a window size and then uh, every periodic 
time steps. We just forget everything that, that has happened until now and just sort of restart a, a stationary version of the learning and control algorithm. We proved that for the LQR problem, uh, even if the window size for these uh, these kind of heuristics is tuned optimally with knowledge of the variation uh, of the input parameters, it cannot match the, the optimal regret guarantee that we proved for our algorithm. So in some strong sense, this is a suboptimal loss of heuristics. What I want to do uh, next quickly is to uh, go over some of the known results for learning and control of stationary LQR system because uh, a few of those ingredients that are already known for, for stationary LQR system are also useful for our work on control of non-stationary LQR systems. So the first ingredient that's uh, useful for our setting is this uh, notion that uh, an LQR problem, if we somehow forget the, the dynamics and the MTP part underlying it, is basically a banded problem with linear feedback, but with quadratic cost. So what do I mean by linear feedback? Uh, so in the stationary problem where we don't know the matrices A and B, if we take some uh, action ZT, so ZT here is the state XT and our action UT, then what we observe is uh, a linear uh, inner product of the uh, our, our, our action and the unknown parameter theta T plus some noise. So we have noisy linear feedback. And what do I mean by quadratic cost? So assume that the two dynamics is theta. We estimate the dynamics to be theta hat and then take a control which is optimal the optimal linear feedback controller for this estimate theta hat. Then there's a nice theorem uh, by Simchovich and Foster which says that there is some constant C1 and C2, such that if the distance between the two dynamics and what I estimate uh, is less than this constant, then the average cost I would incur for my suboptimal controller for this two dynamics and the optimal controller for the dynamics theta uh, is quadratic or function of my estimation error. So I have linear feedback, and then the cost or the regret per, per time set that I enter is quadratic in my estimation. Error. So that's what the quadratic cost part is. So that's the first ingredient that we use in our paper. The second ingredient that we use from the theory of uh, learning and control stationary LQR is basically this common idea of uh, exploration and exploitation uh, using phases of geometrically increasing duration. So uh, there's a simple algorithm that was proposed in this paper by Simpson and Foster for learning and uh, control of stationary LQR system based on a certainty equivalent controller. And that proceeds as follows. So we first partition our entire time horizon into phases of doubling length. In phase i, we play some linear feedback controller case of i. And then based on the observations during this phase, we estimate what the underlying dynamics might be. So let's call that theta hat i. And then in the next phase, i plus one, we play the uh, optimal linear feedback controller based on our estimate from the previous phase. Again, uh, get a better estimate of the, the dynamics that I had i plus one based on the observations in this phase. Play the optimal controller for that based uh, in the next phase and so on. Now, what do I mean by estimate that I had i? Uh, we'll just use the ordinary least squares estimator based on our observations, right? So, in particular, we'll pick the the parameters that I had i, which minimize the L two norm between the state observations I make and the expected uh, state uh, given the parameters that I had. And what do I mean by play the controller case of i? Basically, we play the linear feedback controller, but we also add some exploration noise to get an improved estimate of our dynamics. And in particular, theta t here is a Gaussian uh, random variable, and sigma i denotes the amount of exploration energy that we inject into this problem. And the right scale of uh, how much noise to inject is basically given by this expression. So the variance of the exploration noise should be roughly one over the square root of the length of the phase. And the intuition for why this is the right choice is as follows. So if we inject sigma i amount of noise per time step, then because the uh, cost for the LQR system is quadratic in my control, in each uh, time step of phase i, I roughly incur a regret of sigma i squared. So for the total regret I incur because of exploration is the length of the phase times the exploration noise. And because of this exploration noise, the variance of my estimator in theta hat i would be roughly the inverse of this total exploration energy that I inject. But because my LQR problem uh, roughly has cost which is quadratic in the estimation error, uh, the regret that I would incur per time step would be uh, linear in the variance of my estimator. So the total regret that I incur because of an uh, inaccurate estimate would be roughly one over sigma i square for, for phase i plus one. And if I try to balance these two sources of uh, regret, it turns out that the optimal amount of exploration energy to inject is sigma i square uh, proportional to one over the square root of so we'll use these two ingredients to come up with an algorithm. So let me uh, quickly give just one uh, nugget uh, or algorithmic nugget for what goes into converting the stationary algorithm into uh, the algorithm for dynamic uh, LQR problem. I won't be able to give the full algorithm. Uh, 
But here's sort of the key idea, which is like the stationary problem where we fix a controller for an entire uh, phase of geometric length. In the non-stationary problem, that's a bad idea because what would happen is that my dynamics could change by a large amount in the middle of a phase, and then I would incur a large regret for that entire phase. And the right uh, algorithm should somehow try to adaptively detect if a large change has happened and then restart learning in that situation. Since we don't know what a large change might be, we uh, borrow this uh, technique that was introduced for the contextual bandit problem in this paper uh, by Jen et al., which basically in, in, in any phase tries to detect non-stationarities at multiple time scales. And uh, somewhat less informally, this is uh, how it, uh, it tries to do it. So at each time t in a phase j, uh, and for each possible m from zero to j minus one, we try to detect whether a change of size one over square root of the two n has happened. And we do that by, with some probability, starting a, a detection test. And what does this test look like? For the next two to the m time steps, we increase the acceleration noise to sigma m, right? So remember, sigma m was one over square root of two to the m. And based on our observations for these next two to the m time steps, we estimate what the prevailing dynamics might be. Let's call it theta hat i j m. And if our estimate differs from our estimate from the previous phase by more than one over square root of the m, uh, then we just forget everything that has happened until now and restart. So that's what we mean by adaptive uh, restart algorithm. There are more details in the paper, but this is sort of the key uh, idea that we use. Now, before I end, let me uh, say a few words on the ordinary least squares estimator because this really forms the, the technical novelty and the bulk of the analysis in our paper. So as I mentioned, the in the case of stationary LQR, the uh, algorithm is just pay, play some uh, stationary controller, estimate the dynamics based on OLS estimator, and then use a controller based on this estimate. And for the stationary case, if we just uh, open up the, the loss function that the OLS estimator is trying to minimize, which is just the sum of squared losses, then the uh, solution of the OLS estimator looks like this. So the first term here stands for the mean of the OLS estimator. And the second term represents the variance of the OLS estimator. So one thing that you can observe from here is that if theta is fixed, which is the case in stationary uh, problem, then the ZT, ZT transpose inverse cancels here, and I just get theta. Right? So in some sense, in the stationary problem, OLS estimator is unbiased. Pictorially, we can think of uh, the unbiased theta as follows. So suppose uh, I'm just trying to estimate uh, a two-dimensional theta based on two observations. So let's say I have Z1 and Z2 here. What the OLS estimator does is it first uh, uh, says that what I'm really observing are the projection of this theta on my vectors z1 and z2. And then my estimate based on these observing these projections be, uh, uh, just go does the same thing in reverse. So I shoot rays which are orthogonal to my vector z1 and z2 from these projections. And wherever they intersect is my uh, mean of the OLS estimator. Right? And, and that's why in the stationary case, this is unbiased. But this doesn't quite work when my parameters theta are non-stationary. So when the thetas are non-stationary, as in our problem, the OLS estimator looks something like this. So the mean of my estimator is not uh, by unbiased anymore because there's a theta t here. And what can happen is that the in the non-stationary case, they can actually be a very large bias, even if all my theta t's live close to each other. So here's a pictorial representation of why, uh, when this can happen and why this is a problem. So let's imagine again that I'm trying to estimate a two-dimensional two uh, theta vector based on two observations. And let's say Z1 and Z2 are the two uh, actions that I've taken. And let's imagine that the, the two theta vectors, which were non-stationary, are the red theta 1 and the orange theta 2. Right? So how does the mean of my OLSS meta work? So I first observe the projections of these theta on the Z. So in, in the first time step, I observe projection of theta 1 on Z1 and then theta 2 on Z2 in time step 2. And then to get the mean of the estimator, I shoot off rays orthogonal to Z2 starting from these projections and similarly orthogonal to Z1 from this projection. And it could happen that even though my thetas are close to each other, but because Z1 and Z2 are also close to each other, my theta had to be very far from any of these thetas. And this is indeed uh, something that can happen in a problem because our Z, which are X and U, actually live in a smaller dimensional subspace because I'm using a linear feedback controller. We actually proved that uh, for our situation, this is uh, actually not a problem. Uh, and the proof idea is that we basically look at a one-dimensional loss function for the OLS estimator. So we fix some direction V, and we create this one-dimensional loss function, which is what's the uh, error or what's the L2 error uh, for my estimate, which is theta bar times lambda times V. And we prove that if I just try to find the optimal theta 
in this one dimensional uh, problem. Then for n of directions b, the uh, optimal theta is pretty close to uh, one of the representative theta hat. So let's say one of the thetas for, for this space. Again, this is somehow enough to show that the uh, OLS estimator that we will get will also be close to uh, the, the average, let's say, of the, of the input parameters if all of them are close to each other. Okay. Finally, let me end with uh, some possible next steps. So uh, one promising next step would be to uh, extend analysis that we have done to the case where the noise uh, does not uh, uh, obey a Gaussian structure, or for example, where the covariance matrix may be unknown. Uh, another interesting direction is, uh, for instance, optimal uh, regret. So for uh, what we've done in this paper, we basically put minimax reg uh, regret in terms of the variation. It will be nice to get a more nuanced uh, regret result, which says that for a given instance, my regret is, is optimal. Uh, another direction uh, is that our algorithm was a model-based algorithm, so we try to estimate the dynamics uh, and then pick a controller that's optimal for the for our estimated model. Uh, a much more powerful and much more general uh, technology would be if we can somehow create an algorithm which is model-free. So instead of learning dynamics, it directly learns uh, a policy. So I'll, I'll stop here. Uh, thanks for attending my talk, uh, and please uh, feel free to send me any questions over email later.